Aloha and welcome to Aquarian Radio at AquarianRadio.com. I am your host, Janet Carol Lesson, with my co-host, anthropologist, Dr. Sasha Lesson. This is an episode of Enki Speaks on the Aquarian Radio Network. Our first program in the series, called The Anunnaki and Us, features 30 chapters of our history from 4.5 billion years ago to 311 BCE. And today in this first episode, we are going to feature on, we're going to feature chapter one, how the solar system formed and how Nibiru joined it. And now let me bring you, bring on Dr. Sasha Lesson. 4.5 billion years ago or so, our solar system grew from a gas cloud. The gas cloud circled its own center and it was going counterclockwise. The gas cloud cooled and it formed both our sun and it also formed a dimmer pair star. star. And the star was a sub-brown dwarf. It's called Nemesis. Both our sun and Nemesis developed planets and these planets circled them. Tiamat was the watery planet that would become Earth. And this was a planet that existed, it was going around the Sun, between the orbits of Jupiter and Mars. The ancient Enuma Elish relates how 4.5 billion years ago, our Sun created this Tiamat and next created Mercury. Their story says that the Sun blew comets with water and meteorites with gold from Mercury to Earth. And then as this uh, cloud of planet forms whirled around, they started pairing up. Venus paired with Mars, Jupiter paired with Saturn, and Uranus paired with Neptune. And all these planets now keep orbiting the Sun counterclockwise, and so does this Tiamat, the the one that's going to become Earth. But there was no planet at this time between Venus and Jupiter, where we on Earth now are. And Pluto, at that time, was just a moon of Saturn. So Tiamat didn't have a partner planet uh, like the other planets, but one of Tiamat's moons, called Kingu, started getting bigger. Kingu started then to be a partner with Tiamat, And it was getting ready, their story says, to orbit the sun and not go around, just go around Tiamat anymore. However, before that could happen, about four billion years ago, before Kingu could orbit the sun, Nibiru invaded the sun's interplanetary system. Nibiru belched fire and radiation. Neptune's gravity pulled Nibiru into the inner solar system, and there it changed the orbits of all of Solaris's planets. When Nibiru neared Tiamat, both Tiamat and Nibiru sprouted new moons. Evil Wind, which is a moon of Nibiru, hit Tiamat. Another In another orbit, Nibiru hit Tiamat and scattered rocks, which are the asteroids and ice comets, from Tiamat into the orbit between Jupiter and Mars. When Nibiru hit Tiamat, it gouged a deep gap in Tiamat and knocked a big chunk of Tiamat into an orbit between Mars and Venus. The chunk, now Earth, orbited the Sun. Evil wind and Nibiru broke Earth's crust into slabs. The gap in our chunk of Tiamat became our Pacific Gap. Earth's crust formed 4 billion years ago on the continents, but formed 200 million years ago under the Pacific Ocean. The crust, 12 to 45 miles deep on land lies but three and a half to five miles under the Pacific Ocean. When Evil Wind and Nibiru hit Tiamat, no crust remained in the Pacific Gap, only a gaping hole. After collision, silt ran into the gap from the land and volcanoes spewed lava into it. They created the thinner crust under the Pacific Ocean. Earth then attained the shape of a globe dictated by the forces of gravity. Water scattered into the cavity on the torn-off side. Dry land appeared on Earth's other side. The breakup of the Earth's crust, plate, tectonics, differences between continental and oceanic crusts, emergence of a Pangaea, which is a single continent from under the waters, the primordial ocean, encircling ocean led our scientists to confirm the Nibiran model of Earth formed after evil wind, then Nibiru hit Tiamat. 
Nibiru attained a clockwise 3,600-year orbit around Nemesis and then back through the Solaris system, and, and it passes through Mars and Jupiter's orbits. Nibiru went through uh, regions of great cold when it was distant from both Nemesis and Solaris. However, Nibiru's volcanoes kept spewing ash into its atmosphere, so in the very cold parts of Nibiru's orbit, uh, the ash kept the heat in. And as it got too close to the sun, the ash uh, kept uh, Nibiru from getting overheated. Chapter 2, Pleiades, home of the Nibirans. Syrians, advanced humans from the Lyrian stars, moved to the planets of the Pleiades in Orion's belt some 600 million years ago. Homo sapien Pleiadians rocketed to Earth to escape the wars that these Lyrans were getting into. And then later on, even more Lyrans and Pleiadians came to Earth, and they created wars on Earth too. This is way before the Anunnaki ever got there. The first Pleiadians fled back to the Pleiades, and some of these are the ones that went to Nibiru. The Nibirans then developed their own technologically advanced, very warring nation sites, states, and uh, they had big wars. Meanwhile, back on Earth, the terraformers started adding advanced hominoids to the biosphere here. Chapter 3, Nibiru Politics Set Mental Matrix They Took to Earth On Nibiru, 656,000 BCE or so, the nations of the Nibiru's north and south nuked each other. Nuclear explosions and fallout left many of these Nibirans sterile and killed a huge percentage of the men. To end the war, the leaders drew lots for who was going to rule the planet, and a guy named An, A-N, won the drawing. An created Agade, the new capital, and he imposed military rule. This is their model, military rule. It was hierarchic, male-dominated, dominated, and patrilineal, and An issued orders for all Nibiru. And he ordered all the men, you must take principal wives, and you must take secondary wives. I want you to take official concubines, too. Breed. So An's successors set out a law, which they called the Law of Succession, which dogs us to this day, as you'll see. When the king dies, his son with his father's half-sister succeeds to the crown. And that's it for this episode of Anunnaki and Us, Chapters 1 to 3. Next program, we share Nibiru's peril drove miners to Earth 450,000 years ago. This has been an episode of Enki Speaks. We have several books for sale now on the Nibirans and the Anunnaki. Our first book is Anunnaki, Gods No More. Second book is Anunnaki, Legacy of the Gods. And we have a couple books coming up, Anunnaki Timeline. And I just published my new book, Dance of the Souls, Pierce the Veil by Janet Care Lesson. And you can get all these books on Amazon.com, or you can go to our website, AnkiSpeaks.com, ExterrestrialContact.com, and AquarianRadio.com. Thank you for joining us. Aloha, love and blessings from Janet Care Lesson, and Dr. Sasha Lesson saying aloha.